Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. On our media line, Lance Metzler, Rockingham County Manager. We're going to the top today to get our monthly report from Rockingham County Government. Hey, Lance. Hey, Mike. How are you doing this morning? I am doing just great. Well, I know we need to get a vaccine update from you. So what's the latest? Yes, that's my primary uh, uh, discussion point today. Is I know this on a, a lot of people's minds now, uh, particularly after they've gone from the the 1A, which are frontline and and um, those, and then going into 1B, which is the 65 now to oh, and older. Mm-hmm. So we've got a lot of different things that are going on right now. We've the first time that we gave the vaccine, we learned in our playbook that was the route to go. We had a it was first come first serve. It was a huge uh, – our staff did as good as they could, but it just wasn't a well-laid-out plan. Uh, it, it, we, it, was, think, it was overwhelming, wasn't it, the people you had? It, it was, and we had, you know, we had people sitting in line from, from you know, six to nine hours, which is just – it's, it's not fair for, for that segment of our population. So we had to go back to the, the, the drawing board, and we talked to other counties and found out the, a strategy which worked out very well, very well. We uh, basically have gone to, to four lanes. Uh, we've got two tents out there. We've got a lot more people that can uh, inoculate folks out there. So we, um, we're, we're basically taking appointments. We did have appointments online only. I reminded staff that we have an elderly population that may not be uh, computer savvy, so we need to free up some space on the phone. So we've gone to one-third of our shots on phone, two-thirds on the computer, and as we get through phase three, then we'll do we'll do a, a combo of both. But you know, it's it's frustrating to us. We have capacity to give several thousand vaccines a day. We just don't have enough vaccines. We're getting in, you know, a thousand a week, and we've got to reserve 200 of those for for the um, uh, for those that are 1A that are coming back for their their second shots. And so that leaves 800. And it's still frustrating that we're not getting a, a lot more. Uh, but, but our uh, process, the appointment process, works out very effectively. I think it takes them, you know, five to ten minutes to get through to get the shot, and then 15 minutes to be in observation, and they're they're gone. So we've heard nothing after the first round. We had nothing but good commentary back from our citizens. Good, good, yeah, yeah. That uh, learning experience that first time around for sure. I have some good friends that were in that first group. Uh, for hours and uh, miss their medicine and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it sounds like, uh, sounds like you've got things worked out now smoothly. Yeah, again, you know, the first time, is, you know, you, you, you live and you learn and you, and you try not to make mistakes again once you've gone through it. And so, you know, we do feel very, very, very bad about the, the first round. And so we've modified it again. We've got, in, you know, any, from 65,000, uh, excuse me, age 65 and up, we've got about, close to 20,000 in our population. So we've got a lot of, a lot of road to cover. And if we're not getting the vaccines in, it's just going to take time. And we need to ask people, the folks to be patient out there. We have worked with uh, uh, citizens that's called in. You know, I've encouraged them that if they weren't able to get online here, you know, Walgreens is starting to provide uh, vaccines as well as uh, Carolina Apothecary um, and a few of the other pharmacies. The hospitals are doing that as well. So wherever they can get in, Please get in. We'll, we'll try our best to make sure we get as many folks in here. But if, if all else fails and they can't get through here, and we realize we've had we've had several citizens call and say, look, I've called, I called, I called, and I never got in, and I went online. you got to realize that with, we, when we have 20,000, roughly 20,000 that are 65 and up, then our phone lines get inundated. We, we went through 600 online uh online appointments within 10 minutes if that tells you anything that 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 sounds great that sounds like a good job for sure but this is a complicated process all the way around isn't it lance it is and and what would you know so the state gets in 120,000 vaccine doses a a week Mm -hmm. either pfizer or moderna and so 84 of those 84,000 of those goes to providers and there are 272 providers within the state of North Carolina with all the public health, the pharmacies, and the hospitals. So the other 36,000 are saved for what they call events. And events would be like at the Charlotte, the, uh, Charlotte Speedway, the Bank of America Stadium, the Greensboro Coliseum. 
But I've asked our staff to reach out to the state to see if we can have an event here. You know, if we can handle a couple thousand here like the Coliseum does in Greensboro, then it would be a very uh, good process for us to team up with UNCR and uh, Annie Penn to provide a, ma a mass event here. And we believe we can accommodate those individuals. We're looking at a, a site at the Rockingham Community College. They've been very, very, uh, very helpful to work with with their gymnasium. So we plan on hopefully having a mass event if the state will coordinate. Of course, we're going to ask the state. They can always reject us, but our goal is to make sure we get as much vaccine doses in Rockingham County as possible so that we can make sure our, all of our, our citizens are taken care of. Sure. Have you heard back from them at all? Do you have any? Is there a, a sign there perhaps that that may happen? We sent, we sent an email, uh, I think Monday, uh, public health sent an email to the state. The state told us the process. We're going through the process now, so we'll, we'll have to wait and hear. But that would be a major major uh, plus for us if we can get a couple thousand doses here on top of our regular amount that we get to be able to help our, particularly our most vulnerable uh citizens in Rockingham County. Oh, that'd be great. So hopefully we'll hear from them soon. And really, you don't know until the end of the week how many doses you're getting specifically, do you? No, Friday between 8 and 9 o'clock, we'll get a call or an email from the state that tells us exactly how much we have. So that's the reason we set up the, the call line and the appointments at noontime on Friday. It's simply because we don't know. I mean, it could be 600, it could be 1,000, you know, it could be zero. We, we just have no idea how much we're going to get. So they give us an allotment of, of 400 on a regular basis, and then they give us, they base it also on the uh, your aging population, so we'll get another 600 on top of that. So typically we get 1,000 a week, at least for the next two more weeks. We've got it for the first week. So, you know, we have to split that up with with the the 65 and older, and then again, we still have some 1As, that, 1As which I mean are, are uh, frontliners that are out there that have to get there mm -hmm. for a second shot. Sure, yeah. Well, uh, I, I appreciate you and your team and the hard work and making it happen. Uh, I did have uh, someone call me the other day, and they were concerned because of the number they were trying to get through on uh, didn't seem to work. What number should... Our our people be calling. Do you have uh, Do you have that handy, or tell us where to get it? Yeah, it's it's three three six three nine four zero zero six four. Again, it's three three six three nine four zero zero six four. And we're also working on that. We had a a, a, a concerned citizen call and says, we know we need more than one person taking calls. We actually have a room set up with. Uh, six phone lines that are coming in. So we do have a call center, and we're looking to potentially expand that to 10 lines so that we have additional uh, folks in there to be able to um, handle the call. We have 10 in a room that are answering six phones, and then we're going to expand. Try, we're trying to expand it to handle additional phones so we can get these um, calls that are coming in. But I know that there's frustration out there, and I can empathize about that. And, you know, I've got – I had an elderly mother, and I understood her needs and, and you know, God bless her. She's not with us anymore. But if she she was, she she didn't have a computer at home. She she barely used a cell phone. She didn't like cell. She didn't like the modern technology. So yeah. I can understand the frustration when you've got somebody like my mother that would want to call in and keep either getting a busy signal or you know call back or nothing. So we're we are working on that, trying to perfect that as well. Let me ask you this now: You have uh, have been through this. You you had COVID. So what does that do to uh, to you and the vaccine? Do you have to do that? Do you have to take the vaccine, or how does that work? You're talking about after the COVID? Yes. So typically, if if you've been if you tested positive and you you've been through COVID, you've got to wait at least thirty days. But you've got the antibody in you within ninety days. But you have to wait at least thirty days to get the the vaccine. And and you know, we've had we again we've had our frontline folks get the vaccine. I've not had the vaccine yet. I would fall myself and the uh, county staff fall in phase three. So we're waiting. So we're, we're patiently waiting like everybody else. But, um, you know, again, we want to make sure that our most vulnerable residents of the county are taken care of and make sure they're taken care of well in advance of, of the ones that can take care of ourselves. Like you said, I went through it, you know, and I had a tough time at the age of 50. I can only imagine being a an older adult that's going through this that could, uh, could – potentially 
uh, could potentially be fatal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Lance, uh, thank you for the update. A, a very uh, timely information. I appreciate it, and uh, I'm going to write this up in a, in a story and, and use this as well. Anything else before we finish? No, it's just that, that if anybody has any questions about the process, you know, they can call us, they can call our our, um, our public health department. I know that there are questions that people have about well, how does the vaccine affect me, what will I experience, and they can just feel free to call our um, our public health department and, and discuss that with them. Okay. Lance, I know you're busy. Thank you for taking time to talk to us and give us this information. Have a real good week. You too. Thank you, Mike. All Take right. care. You too. Bye. Bye. That's our county manager here in Rockingham County, Lance Metzler. Again, that phone number he gave out, 336-394-0064. And uh, when we get the information back, and if it looks like uh, there will be a, uh, a mass uh, vaccination site here, uh, possibly at Rockingham Community College. Uh, we'll certainly bring you that news as soon as we get it. Let me invite you to go to the county website to uh, get some good information, good resources there, good tool. That's myrockinghamcountync.com.